Hey everybody, this is Rusty Richards, and yesterday I posted a video asking you to ask questions, to comment questions um, back to me, and then today I would respond and give you biblical, uh, honest responses to your honest questions. And so that's what I'm going to do right now, and as I do that, um, I would like you to continue commenting to this video with more questions to which next week I will respond to those and we'll just keep this going. As long as you're asking questions, I'm going to keep responding uh, to your questions. So let's go ahead and dive into the, today's questions. Uh, we have four questions. The first one is this. Do you think this is really a sign of the end times? Did the Bible really predict this epidemic would happen? Now, I'm guessing when they, they ask that question that they're, they're, you know, if somebody would, would believe that this is the end times, uh, the coronavirus and what's going on around, around the world, that they're probably pulling that from Luke 21, 11, that it says there will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. Now, I understand what that verse says. However, if you study the end times, it's called eschatology, uh, there's lots of different ways to interpret all of the end time prophecy in the Bible. There's uh, some that take it in a, a very figurative sense, and there's others that take it in a very literal sense. So you have people that look at things spiritually or metaphorically or literally. And uh, some people, when they look at the end time uh, descriptions and prophecies in the Bible, they, they think that uh, there's going to be this time of tribulation. And uh, other people would say, no, um, the tribulation is, is later down the road. Uh, um, and others would say, you know, there's going to be this rapture. Um, so you have rapture people, then you have tribulation people, and then after the tribulation, there's going to be this rapture. And then uh, then you have other people that say, no, neither of those are going to happen. There's going to be this uh, millennium or time period where Christ will rule and reign on the earth. And, and so, you know, you need to read the scriptures for yourself and determine for yourself. Is it literal? Is it figurative? Is it spiritual, metaphorically? Uh, you know, you'll have to read the scripture and, and ask God and discern that. So I'm, I'm going to challenge you to open up your Bibles and read it. Read Matthew 24 and Matthew 25. Read Mark 13. Read Luke 21. Um, and look at it. Look at, look at Revelations. Uh, read through that uh, chronologically. How did things happen and in what order? And read the book of Daniel. Um, but it's important to understand that if you take uh, the end time prophecies um, uh, literally or figuratively or in whatever sense, um, that all Christians believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of all and that he is our Savior and that he will return and, and reign for all eternity. All Christians believe that. And so, you know, I believe personally that we are living in the end times ever since Jesus left this earth. We're, we're between two comings. In Acts chapter 1, uh, Jesus ascends into the clouds, and then uh, the disciples are standing there looking up in there like they can't even believe what just happened. And uh, two men dressed in white, angels, appear and say, hey, uh, men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking up in the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken away from you in heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go. And so uh, ever since that moment happened, um, we are living between his first coming and his second coming that is predicted he will return someday. And so, um, you know, I just believe, um, even though we don't know exactly how things are going to happen uh, with uh, the rapture and with the tribulation and with uh, the millennial or, and, and all these events, even though the Bible is very specific about a lot of things, um, I, I really believe in like verses like Luke 1240 that says, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. That verse says... Be ready because he is coming and nobody knows the hour. And there's lots of verses like that. So anytime you hear somebody say, it's now, it's happening right now. Well, uh, well, that's probably a sign that it's not happening. Or, you know, if people think they know the exact hour, well, scripture says nobody knows the exact hour, only the Father in heaven. And uh, that our job is to be ready. 
And the problem is, is when we get so focused on the end times or, you know, Christ's return and when it's going to, when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen, sometimes we lose focus of the right now and how we're to be uh, loving and serving and, and obey his commands right now. Uh, people call that being so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. And I don't know about you, but, you know, uh, I would hate to be right on when Jesus is returning and wrong and how I live my life faithfully for him. And in fact, the Bible tells us that in Matthew 25, uh, Jesus is um, d talking about uh, the, the judgment day, the day he'll return. And it says, when the, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, all the angels will be with him and he'll sit down on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he'll separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. And he will place the, the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from for, for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me in. And then he'll, he'll reverse that for those on his left. And I guess I say this to you to say that he will return. And until he returns, he wants us to be feeding the hungry, uh, you know, taking care of, of strangers and visiting the sick and those in prison. He wants us to be representing him and obeying and living his commands here on earth. So um, uh, could this be the end times? Possibly. Um, uh, but we are still uh, living between the comings and we have work to do right now to live for him right now. Here's a, the second question. And these next three questions, they're not going to take that much time. But the next one is, why does Jesus do all the work for God? This was asked by a kid. Um, who kind of saw, uh, you know, all the stuff that Jesus does. And he says, why does Jesus do all the work for God? You know, I just love kids' questions because they're honest and they're real. Um, you know, some people might be thinking something similar. But part of the reason Jesus uh, appears to do a, a lot of work for God or a lot of the things in Scripture or whatever is because uh, Jesus is God. And the Bible tells us he is the exact representation of God's being. Hebrews 1, 3 says that. The Bible also says in John 14, 9, um, that, you know, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. If you know Jesus, you know the Father. So Jesus does a lot that he does in Scripture because um, he is the best representation of the Father. Um, another way to think of why Jesus does so much for God, if you would, is that uh, you can't really separate anything he does from God, because he's, he is God. Um, we believe in the triune God, which basically means that God exists in three persons, three Godheads, and he's one God that's revealed and eternally exists in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I like to explain this with Neapolitan ice cream, um, that you have one tub of ice cream in three flavors, strawberry, v vanilla, and chocolate. And, and in the same way, we have one God and three distinct persons that make up that one God. You have God the Father, God the Holy Spirit and, and God the Son. And so uh, anything Jesus does, he doesn't do it apart from the rest of the Godhead. Um, and so they, they serve each other. Um, here's, a, here's another question. What's the best way to keep up with daily devotions right now? And I love that question because right now our lives are, are totally changed and some of us find that we have more time than others. Some of us are, um, have a lot of anxiety or stressed about things and, and it's good to turn to the word. In fact, right now might be the best opportunity for a lot of people to develop a habit of praying and sitting and being with the Lord and reading the Bible and doing some of these things that maybe you haven't been doing up till now. And I love the heart behind this question. It says, I want to have a greater relationship with God. I want to get into the Bible. So let me just give you a couple of resources to do that, okay? Um, Right now, media is like a Netflix of, um, if you would, it's, it's a Christian online 
uh, library of resources. There's tons of Bible studies and things on Right Now Media. Uh, it's amazing. It does cost, but our church has a subscription to it. And if you go through our website, you can have a free subscription to Right Now Media. And that is, that's an invitation that I'm giving to anybody that attends Minear Christian Church. So um, if you attend this church, I invite you to go to our website and sign up for Right Now Media through our website. It's got stuff for your kids to watch, you know, fun videos and movies, as well as Bible studies and devotionals, as well as um, stuff for you and your um, adults and people of all ages, um, parenting, just life, finances, and so forth. Um, so right now, media. Another thing is YouVersion Bible app. YouVersion Bible app has tons of Bible reading plans. If you don't know where to start, uh, just go to YouVersion Bible app, um, download it onto your phone or iPad, and uh, sign up for a, a Bible reading plan. It'll send you daily devotions. It'll send you reminders. Uh, there's videos attached to a lot of really good stuff. Uh, YouVersion Bible app. Another uh, great resource is the Bible Project. The Bible Project had, is also on YouVersion Bible app and on Right Now Media. They produce videos, short videos that explain each individual book of the Bible as well as major topics and themes of scripture. So I invite you to go to Bible Project. All these resources and, and, and more are found on our church website, mightiercc.org slash resources. So go check that out, a lot of good stuff. One last question. So here's the last question. How do people live without Christ giving them hope? Well, to be honest, I don't know because I've spent most of my life uh, with a relationship with the Lord. I came to know Christ as a, as a child and I've been living for him and I've had that hope most of my life. That doesn't mean life is easy. In fact, life has been hard at times. I've lost my father to cancer. I've had some struggles throughout life, but... Um, but I've always had that hope and that peace in Christ. And, and so for me, I don't know. But I do know that a lot of people out there are hurting right now. And it might be you. You might be one of those people that are living without the hope of Christ right now. And you need that encouragement. Maybe you're, you're longing for that and you're just interested in that. If you would like to find how to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and have hope during these times, I want to encourage you to talk to a Christian friend, cry out to God and talk to him. And if you would, even call our church office. I'd love to meet you and talk to you sometime about how to do that. In fact, one of the ways that, that, you, that may help you develop a relationship with God is if you would join us on, on um, Sunday mornings. We, we're posting pre-recorded services on, online. Join us, participate, watch those videos, and, um, and just open your heart up to God and let him have his way in your heart. Let us know how we can serve you. Okay, friends, those are the four questions. I'm done. Post your comments to this video. Share this video. Ask more questions in the comments of this video. And I will see you next week as we answer more of your questions. Have a great week.